Of course, there are other etiologies associated with diarrhea in travelers, and we usually think first of, first of all about bacterial diarrheas, but there are also patients that will develop more chronic, often less severe diarrheas that tend to persist. Sometimes they're treated with antibiotics and, and they don't respond. They may be on again, off again, often associated with crampy belly pain and bloating. And typically, these suggest that these patients have protozoa. And in most of the world, the protozoa involved is Giardia. And it's funny, when people go to exotic places like Africa, they feel like, oh, Entamoeba histolytica is probably more common because I'm in Africa. It's still Giardia. Giardia is the most common intestinal protozoa worldwide. So it presents with this chronic, on again, off again, oftentimes, loose stool, a lot of gas, bloating, and uh, how do you treat it? Well, in the U.S., the drug that's been used forever is Flagyl, metronidazole. But in most of the rest of the world, there is a drug that's now available in the U.S. You can order it through your pharmacy, and it's called tenadazole. And it's related to metronidazole, and it has many different trade names, but it has better efficacy than metronidazole. And the nice thing about it is you can dose it two grams at bedtime. You sleep through your symptoms, and you can often repeat it the next night. And taking two grams at bedtime, just one dose per day, and then repeating it the next day has better efficacy for treating Giardia than a week's worth of Flagyl. There's also a drug in the U.S. Uh, called nidazoxanide, uh, and if you can pronounce it, you can probably also write for that drug. I have less experience with that, but it's an alternative to Flagyl. There's another drug I should mention, and it's a drug called Rifaximin. And it's a drug that's been introduced recently in the last few years for the treatment of traveler's diarrhea. My problem with rifaximin is that it's not recommended for invasive diarrhea. So, you know, you probably have to carry another drug anyway, like Cipro, uh, in case the patient has invasive diarrhea. And the truth is, if it's non-invasive diarrhea, it's usually not that severe. The patient's not that sick. And oftentimes, in my experience, they respond to good old-fashioned Pepto-Bismol, bismuth subsalicylate. You need to use extreme caution using that drug in patients under 12 years old because it has salicylates in it, but it can be very effective. And uh, both for prophylaxis, which I don't use it for, and for treatment of really mild non-invasive diarrheas. So there's reason to bring Pepto-Bismol in your medical kit.